It's a different feeling when like you're falling in love. This is a bachelor recap from a guy. It's hometowns. And by hometowns, I mean hotel rooms. We're down to four women, which is what The Bachelor refers to as hometowns. And what The Good Doctor refers to as just another day at the office. So Michelle's up first, and her hometown date takes us to beautiful Farmington, Pennsylvania. This date starts off with Matt and Michelle just wearing the same color. And it's like, dude, like, Matt, I thought we've been over this before. Like, just stop with the purple sweaters. So on their date, Matt met the kids in Michelle's class. Oh. <laughs> Through Zoom, obviously, because, you know, it's online learning, am I right? It's all the rage. And honestly, the kids just started grilling Matt with questions. Mr. James, do you like her? <laughs> uh, I do. Mr. James, do you, do, have you guys kissed yet? Well, let's just say that we've held hands. <laughs> These kids are cute. <laughs> How many girlfriends do you have? <laughs> Uh, well, I, I have one right here, so... <laughs> Next question. I didn't answer my question, you poopy head. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Have you guys done it in the fantasy suite yet? <laughs> no, that doesn't come until next week. Wait, wait, what did you just ask? Mr. James, why do you have so much water in your armpits? Are you going to marry her? We're in the process of figuring that out. That night after meeting Michelle's family, they play a little two-on-two -two basketball. Guys versus girls. Which was pretty cool, until then the opposing teams just started kissing on the court. Leaving for some of the most sensual kisses I've ever seen on a basketball court since Charles Barkley and referee Dick Pavetta. Next up is Rachel's hometown, and this hometown date took us to beautiful Farmington, Pennsylvania. And Rachel pulls up in a Plymouth Prowler, which honestly I didn't know anyone still drove those things. I don't think I've seen one of those since it was offered as a grand prize in McDonald's Monopoly game back in the 90s. So on their date they go skydiving. <laughs> and honestly you couldn't have scripted this date any better. At one point Matt literally said what could possibly go wrong that's like saying i'll be right back in a horror movie never ever ever under any circumstances say i'll be right back because you won't be back i'm getting another beer you want one yeah sure i'll be right back oh! it's like the kiss of death but then also while on the date rachel says <laughs> yeah and she wasn't lying Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, look at that. She literally bounces off the turf. It was at this moment I realized Rachel's probably not getting the final rose. Partly because I thought she was dead, but then also because if Matt truly loved this woman, I think he would have run a little bit faster than this. That's like the trot that major leaguers give down to first after getting walked. He gave more effort on defense in that basketball game against Michelle's mom. So three minutes later, when he finally gets to Rachel, she makes this noise. <laughs> you all right? When have you ever heard of someone being all right after making this noise? Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, never better. Why do you ask? I have to cut my back. I'm feeling. I have so much grass in my mouth right now. Rachel's like, <laughs> oh, what happened? Rachel just literally slammed into the earth hard. <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong. Like, I know, like, Rachel's been dragged through the mud over the last few weeks, but I, I didn't think they meant that literally. SEC officials would have flagged the ground for targeting. I'll say this, though. For a girl who got slammed into the earth, who had her mouth full of grass and her hair, too, she looked pretty good a mere moments later. Are you okay for real, though? Yeah, I think so. Like, that hair was freshly brushed. My heart hurt when I was watching you, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because you weren't moving for a second. <laughs> it was almost as if hair and makeup ran to her faster than Matt did. Next up is Bree's hometown. And this hometown date took us to beautiful Farmington, Pennsylvania. Bree picks him up in a Jeep, and they just go off-roading. One thing about this date that I haven't seen talked about enough, that night when walking in to meet Bree's mom and best friend matt was carrying a giant stuffed bunny and like i cannot overstate the term giant enough like it was pulled straight out of the prop closet of honey i blew up the kid And the craziest part was, it was never explained. Like, it was never explained. Was I the only person that saw that bunny? Like, why was no one talking about the bunny? So that night, Bree's mom pretty much interrogated Matt. Probably because she thought he was a crazy person for bringing a giant stuffed bunny. Okay. Like, what does anyone do with a bunny that big? Like, Bree's mom is probably like, what am I supposed to do with this bunny? How, like, how are we supposed to get it home? I can't carry it on. Probably won't even be able to check it. A helicopter is approaching. 
approaching with what looks like a giant stuffed animal of some sort hanging from it. So Bree's family dynamic was interesting, to say the least. Interesting. Like Bree's mom looked like she could have been her older sister. And her best friend was there, who was also named Bree. But she looked like she was Bree's baby sister. Except Bree's baby sister was actually a baby to be honest it was hella confusing especially for a girl on the show i just heard talk for the first time last week next up was serena or the artist formerly known as serena p her hometown date took us to beautiful farmington pennsylvania so since serena's from canada she taught matt all about her homeland but like if serena wasn't on this date i would have guessed that this date was set up by someone who had just never been to canada before like every cliche and stereotype you've ever heard about canada was present and accounted for like i'm not canadian and even i felt a little bit offended. <laughs> and not even a single mention of everyone's favorite Canadian, Matthew Perry. So that night, Serena sits down with her family and her sister says, I would say you don't seem smitten. Uh, yeah, probably because no one uses the word smitten anymore. Like, was that her sister or her grandma? Is it 2021 or 1921? It just doesn't seem like you think he's the bee's knees. Listen, toots, I just don't think he's so hotsy totsy for you. So I think you two should scram before you try and make whoopee. If you were truly in love, I just don't know if I'd be able to tell the difference if you were zazzled on giggle water. Like smitten, really? Is that smitten? Sounds like a term that the Bachelor producers would have snuck into the Canadian term flashcards. Okay, what do Canadians put over their hands when they're cold? Sorry, it's smittens. So they walk outside to the conveniently placed bench that's outside of every hometown date ever. And Serena basically just tells Matt that like, I have my doubts. So then Matt meets up with Chris Harrison in a random seating area in the middle of the woods, which is a totally normal place to have a conversation like this. Like I honestly didn't know if they were going to have a heart to heart or go hunt for the Blair Witch. So Matt needed more clarity. So he goes back to Serena P and basically like why were you the only girl that had doubts about us and serena p's like i don't think that you're my person which is totally something someone who watches way too many rom-coms would say no nah, and i know this because i watch way too many rom-coms so matt gets broken up with by serena shocker the only girl on planet earth who felt uncomfortable straddling matt james is the only girl on planet earth who would ever break up with him it's like ever since serena dropped the p She's changed, which we should have seen this coming. I mean, what did I say last week? So that night at dinner, Matt gives Serena P the rose, which is cool because I think she's my new favorite, which probably isn't a good thing for Serena because everyone I start to like, they get sent home. So now Serena joins Kit and Sarah, of, at least of the girls that I can think of, who have dumped Matt. Like, have we ever seen a bachelor get broken up with this many times in a season before? <laughs> like, it reminds me of myself in high school. <laughs> So now with Serena gone, the other three girls were like, do you think she's coming? Is she coming? Do you think she left? I don't think she's coming. Let's just say that it led to the least dramatic rose ceremony in Bachelor history. So each of the girls got a rose, but we also didn't get Chris Harrison coming out and telling us which rose was the final rose of the night. So I don't know what to think. Like, are there still more roses to be given out? And if so, like, do you think maybe we could, I don't know, give one to Kim? <laughs> Kimberly, nice to meet you. Wait, hold up. We have a very important update. Kim, like the real Kim, she somehow found these recaps that I do every week and posted about it on her Instagram stories. I'm not even joking. No, it sucked. I, I witnessed it firsthand with Kim. I'm Kimberly, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. <laughs> I mean, I mean, look. What's good, Kim? So, uh, you still looking for a rose? <laughs> All right, I got to get out of here. Uh, I guess I'll see you guys next week when we get our first glimpse of Matt James Harden's beard. What? <laughs> Not to go all Kesha, but... I like your beard. Thanks for watching. I got grass in my mouth. Ew, I can taste soil. Ew, ew. Why did I get real mud? Oh. A couple weeks ago, I put blush on my face, and this week I'm I'm putting literal soil on my face. Why do Why do I do this?